Hey Rebel EM followers, Salim Razai here, and I wanted to go over a recent case that I had, and we'll call this chest pain, it's a trap. And hopefully from the video that's playing in the background, I've already kind of given away what this case is going to be about. But if you still don't get it, or even if you do, stay tuned in. So we have a 37 year old female who was just in an argument with her husband, and after the argument for two hours comes in with substernal crushing chest pain radiating to both shoulders with shortness of breath. An EKG is gotten and this is what we ended up seeing. And I'm going to highlight for you that in the septal anterior and lateral leads, which is multiple coronary distributions, we see clear ST elevation. And so a heart alert was activated and the patient was taken to the cath lab. Now, the cardiologist said that this was a completely negative left heart cath in the sense that there was no plaque rupture and no critical stenosis. So what's going on? Well, we did a bedside echo and unfortunately I don't have the video of that. So I had to go online to find something that was similar. And that's exactly what I'm showing you here is this classic finding of apical akinesis and dilatation with basal normokinesis. And this is kind of a very classic pattern of the diagnosis that this patient has. And here with the arrows, you can see that there's that dilatation with that basal normokinesis. And it kind of has a look to it. And the look is what's called an octopus trap, which is where the name Takasubo comes from. It's Japanese for taco being octopus, subo being trap. And the reason is, is because people who saw these results or these images ended up thinking the two looked very similar. Now, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, I have a kind of visual representation of that here, where in the yellow boxes, you can see what a normal left ventricle looks like and sort of what a broken heart looks like or a Takotsubo echo kind of looks like. And the final yellow box kind of shows you that the two look very similar. At the bottom here is a left ventricular angiogram showing exactly the same thing with the contrasted dye. And you can see that the top white arrows point to that normokinesis at the base. And then you get that apical dilatation and ballooning, which is kind of that octopus trap kind of look to it. Now this syndrome has a ton of names. There's Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, Takotsubo syndrome, stress cardiomyopathy, broken heart syndrome, Whatever you want to call it, when you're looking it up, when you're looking for it, just realize it has multiple names. So what are some of the hallmark findings? So typically you get acute chest pain and shortness of breath, much like our patient, triggered by an emotional or physical stress, which much like our patient. And then the most common EKG finding is going to be ST elevation in the anterior leads. In this case, we had elevations in the septal anterior and lateral leads. And you'll get a heart cath that shows... I wrote absence of coronary artery disease, but the reality is absence of acute plaque rupture or critical stenosis. And then you may or may not have positive troponins. Now, there's lots of criteria out there for classifying these patients, but the more common one that gets used is this Mayo criteria. And there's really four criteria. And if you have any of these, it kind of points you toward a diagnosis of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. So you get transient regional left ventricular wall dysfunction with deficits extending beyond a single epicardial distribution. Our patient had that. New ST elevation or T-wave inversions on EKG or troponin elevation. Again, our patient had that. And then absence of angiographic evidence of plaque rupture or critical coronary obstruction. Again, our patient had that. And we did, although I didn't state this, rule her out for myocarditis and pheos. Uh, chromocytoma, because both of these uh, can also cause a pattern similar to Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy. So the diagnosis, so when these patients come in, you see ST elevation, it's an automatic cath lab activation because there's no way to distinguish an occlusion myocardial infarction from Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy without a left heart catheterization to show you that there's no acute plaque rupture or critical stenosis. And then on the angiogram, they will see that apical LV dilatation. A secondary test that can guide you toward this diagnosis is just doing a transthoracic echocardiogram, where you'll see that classic pattern that I showed you at the beginning. 
So this is kind of my workflow in terms of how I manage these patients. So they present with new onset chest pain or shortness of breath. And you're going to automatically ev evaluate them for acute coronary syndrome, right? You don't have to worry about these zebra diagnoses at this point. And if they have any one of these three things, a STEMI on EKG, ST elevation MI, a bedside echo that shows LV dysfunction that kind of has that classic pattern or wall motion abnormalities, and or a positive troponin, all paths lead to the same thing, which is emergent left heart calf. And so I will be talking with my cardiologist to get this done sooner than later. And like I said, we cannot distinguish Takotsubo cardiomyopathy in the acute setting from acute coronary syndrome. So you have to rule out acute coronary syndrome and the only way that's gonna get done is with an emergent left heart catheterization. The treatments. So a lot of these patients can present with cardiogenic shock and you may think that you need to start some inotropes, which in some patients are going to be needed. But you need to do a bedside ultrasound to make sure that they do not have left ventricular outflow tract obstruction because inotropes could potentially worsen the picture of what's going on. These patients are typically treated like heart failure patients. They get beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. Since we're acutely trying to rule out acute coronary syndrome, we will also load them with dual antiplatelet therapy. Now, some of these patients may need to be transferred or may already be at a center, but require mechanical circulatory support. And that could come in the form of an impella, that could come in the form of an intraaortic balloon pump, or some combination with VA ECMO. As far as prognosis, nearly all these patients will recover. There is a, a very small minority that may not completely recover. The short-term mortality, which is the window that we care about, is similar to patients who present with acute coronary syndrome. So these patients can still have bad outcomes, especially in the acute window, and could require a ton of support until that hypokinesis and that cardiogenic shock resolves. The chance of subsequent episodes is low from the best literature that I could review. It's somewhere around about 5%. This could be underestimated as this is a relatively kind of new syndrome that people have started paying more and more attention to. But as far as I could find thus far to date, it's about 5%. So what's the bottom line of Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy? Classically, it's going to be left ventricular apical dysfunction after a stressful event. Those two things should point you in the direction of Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy. In the acute setting, it is indistinguishable from occlusion myocardial infarction. And so all paths lead to a left heart catheterization, which is where the diagnosis is either confirmed or refuted. And there is going to basically be no acute plaque rupture and no critical stenosis that would explain this diagnosis before you start leaning toward Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy. And the key thing is in the acute setting, the prognosis is similar to patients with acute coronary syndrome. So these patients should get admitted to a cardiac ICU where they may or may not require mechanical circulatory support. So there you go, a case of chest pain, it's a trap. And now you understand why there are octopus tentacles playing in the background. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.